Morning all and welcome back to another video in the WTF Radio Shack and uh, today we've got something interesting to show you and you might be wondering what I'm doing with these uh, earplugs in my ear and holding this contraption. No, I haven't gone deaf and I'm, this isn't a vintage deaf aid. We're going to take a look at this in a bit more detail, but what this is, is a clandestine spy radio from the 1950s. And you don't see too many of these around, so what I thought I would do is take a closer look at one of these. It was in the... It was in Brian's uh, collection, GW4KYT. Uh, we've actually looked at some of his other gear, and he certainly has quite an eclectic collection of interesting stuff. So without further ado, let us take a closer look at this interesting spy radio. Right, so what we have here is a Mark 301 clandestine spy receiver from the 1950s and apparently from what I've googled I didn't know anything about this when I got this um, I didn't even know what it was in fact uh, I was looking through a pile of Brian's stuff and boxes and I found this and I thought and I thought to myself what on earth is this is this some sort of component for perhaps a bigger radio and uh, I had some friends around over the weekend who, I, who managed to identify it as a spy receiver so I googled it and uh, it it comes out and what I found out was that it was a Mark 301 clandestine spy receiver. So these things apparently were used as as mentioned in the 1950s, and the and and it would appear that these were used by what was called stay behind units during the Cold War. So I presume that you know uh, spies uh, would be listening to. Uh, broadcast um, transmissions by the uh, Eastern Bloc countries or various Eastern Bloc countries uh, you know at the beginning of the Cold War so this radio is it's all valve believe it or not uses battery valves and what, what's first thing you notice is that there's nothing written on it so you don't know, know what the controls are so you have to do a bit of figuring out Obviously, that is the tuning mechanism there. And you've got an on-off switch here, which actually uh, switches the uh, heaters in, or the valves. And then you've got this rotary um, adjustment here is actually for the BFO. So it can actually pick up uh, CW as well as AM. And then you've got obviously a little thing for your earphones here, um, which are probably 1950s AirPods or the equivalent thereof. And then you've got a small power connector there. Let's try and get it into focus battling a bit with that so I'll put it back down and then on the rear there's not really much at all and you've got a couple of connection uh, sockets there which are actually for the aerial so you've got one for ground one for for the aerial and then the other uh, socket is actually for um, an attenuated aerial input so that if you've got quite strong signals you can use that so the way this works is that this comes off and if I can just pull it off. Apparently it covers from 500 to about 18 megahertz, 500 kilo kilohertz to 18 megahertz. And this is basically a coil unit which you can swap around for the different bands. So if you put it that way and the, the band is indicated by the number which is in the top uh, right hand corner as you look at it so you can switch this around 
So that's band two, etc., etc. Anyhow, uh, there's not really much to see on the outside of this. Um, so what we'll do is we'll see if we can connect it up. I've managed to find out the connections for the power, which which one does what. Um, it takes about 60 odd, 69, 60 to 70 volts HT and, and 1.5 volts for the uh, the heaters. And uh, you've also got an aerial, which I suppose if you were a spy, you would sort of rig that up around the room and see what you could listen to. But we'll connect it up to our main aerial, so we should be able to hear something. And what else? Yeah, the other thing as well with this, apparently it also came with another box uh, where you put all your accessories, I should say, accessories and ancillaries. Uh, but I haven't got that box, so it's just just this unit. But it's in pretty good condition, and uh, let's see if we can get it to work. I've taken the back off the Mark 301, and one thing I did notice when I took the back off is the lovely smell of shellac. Anyhow, let's have a quick look at the inside of this little spy receiver. Get a bit of a closer look. So we got, let's have a look, one, one, two, three, four, five battery valves and you can tell this is a super head because you've got the IF cans there next to the valves. And this inside of this little receiver is actually in very good condition. Let's just have a see if I can get a bit of a zoom on there. The little transformer there on the left is the audio transformer. And if I just get my pen that I believe is the main oscillator for the super hat and you got this nice little let's get into focus a bit twin gang capacitor variable capacitor which again is in very good condition I don't know if you can just about see it when it catches the light but there's a little geared mechanism there So this thing was quite well constructed to a pretty high standard. I suppose that if it was in the field, you don't want it breaking. And uh, bear in mind, this is valve technology. Anyhow, I think what I'm going to do is put the back on it, and we need to see if we can fire it up, see if we can receive anything. Right. I think what we're going to do is give this spy set a bit of a test run and uh, I've got it set up on the bench here just a few things to show you so we've got up there is our bench power supply which is supplying 1.5 volts for the heaters and over here which is not on yet is our uh, bench power supply supplying 70 volts for the HT uh, this, that's, that's quite convenient actually because I think the HT supply on this is about 69 volts or thereabouts so that uh, Delta Electronicus uh, bench supply should be able to do that quite easily. And moving down we have our spy set and the original headphones or 1950s version of, of uh, AirPods. We're not going to use those because otherwise you guys won't be able to hear anything. So what I've done is I've rigged this up to a little cheapo LM386 audio amplifier kit that I've got off Amazon for a fiver and that hopefully should amplify the output uh, of where you plug in the headphones. So we've got it on band 3 you can tell that because it has to, the three is up at the sort of top corner 
top right hand corner and band three according to my notes here I don't know if you can see that is uh, 3.110 to 7770 kilocycles as they used to say in, back in the day right let's um let's see if we can get anything out of this thing so what we'll do is we'll switch on the There we go. I've got this rigged up to an aerial, so hopefully it should work. So turn the gun up. There you go. It's a bit scratchy, but it does work. Not exactly. Um, Not exactly hi-fi quality, but um, it does actually receive. A Chinese thing by the sound of it. Just one thing about this, I've actually got the aerial connected up to the aerial attenuated input because this thing gets overloaded very quickly if you just put it straight into the uh, aerial. I think there's a resistor or something there which sort of attenuates the uh, RF input because don't forget this is connected up to my main 80 meter dipole so it, uh, it's obviously going to get overloaded quite quickly. Just need to turn it a little bit. I must be. I think that's quite nifty, actually, for a little 1950s uh, spy set. Um, I'm not sure what actually you could pick up on it, um, apart from sort of listening to music. But hey, I suppose you didn't. I suppose if you were a spy back in those days, you probably didn't have an awful lot to do, except listen to the radio. So there we have it folks, that's a 1950s Mark 301 clandestine receiver. Hope you enjoyed the video, catch you again soon.